Marcia de Salvatore. Hello, hello, hello. Well, thank you so much for coming out. I see some more people coming in. So my name is Marcia. And I just want a quick, brief summary for those who don't know you. I'm from Cincinnati, but my parents are from Calabria, Cosenza. And last week I was invited to do a one-woman show in Cosenza, which is where they're from. And so, of course, my parents were excited. They were like, okay, we're going to come and, you know, uh, visit you and go see the shows in Cosenza. Well, this whole thing started drama, because my mom and dad went to the airport to catch their flight, and they couldn't fly because their passports expires in April. Yeah, today is February 27th, and no one can fly in the United States if your passport is about to expire. So Americans out there, did you know that? You knew that. I didn't know that. I mean, Homeland Security, why? Why even put an expiration date? So you can imagine my mom, the Calabrese woman that she is. No, 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 no. I gotta go. I gotta get on that flight because my daughter got a show and I got the heart problems. Oh, ma'am. I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I don't really know what your heart's got to do with that. I mean, that's just the law that we got to follow. Uh, no one in my country follows the law. <laughs> yeah, my mom is so melodramatic all the time. Yeah, she gives me advice and says things like, Marsha, you be careful with the cellulare. You know why? Because it can give you cancer. Really? Because I don't think my iPhone came with a caution sticker that can cause cancer. Whatever, Mom. Oh, Marsha, you go to Londra this weekend? You better be careful because it's danger. Really? You're from Cosenza, the mafia capital of the world where there's like gun shootings and car bombings and you're afraid of London. Okay. Marsha, you know I heard on the news, don't ride the Metropolitana because of that group ISIS, ISA. Okay. First of all, Mama, you need to stop watching Fox. And second of all, who would want to attack Line A Metro going to Battistini? Can you explain that? I mean, has anyone ever gotten off at an end of a line in Rome? I mean, you come out of the metro and you're like, where am I? Because it's dark and there's like tumbleweed rolling and there you can't see except for the Eastern European men drinking cheap beer. Who would, I mean, who would do that? Anyway, so to get to Cosenza, I course my parents didn't come so I couldn't go with them, I had to choose my way of getting down south. So to get to Cosenza, there are two options. You can take intercity or interstellar. I don't know if any of you ride the trains, but the inner city would take 15 hours to get to Cosenza because it literally stops in every town on the way. And I'd like to think that the trains look more like how they ride in third world countries where like the train is from the 30s, there's paint peeling, there's like chickens flying in the, in the compartments, there are men passed out or playing cards, and people are like hanging out of the window, gasping for air, going, ah, take that option. I'm going to go with Freccia Bianca, right? That's the fast train. It stops one time on the way to Cosenza and it's um, fast. It takes three hours and it's so nice and comfortable. You have these plush seats. You can plug in your phone or computer. There's free Wi-Fi and it's just so peaceful and such a great ride. And you're just sitting there going, God, I love the train. Sitting there and it's all quiet. And then 
suddenly it stops at the one stop. And you're like, oh, but this is okay. And then suddenly the volume of people get really loud. And then all of a sudden you look around and people are just sitting in random places about uh, bookings. And then you hear, Aqua Coca Cola Fanta, Aqua Fanta Coca Cola, Aqua Fanta Coca Cola. And you realize you just heard, you just hit Napoli fucking Centrale. Because <laughs> the further south you go in Italy, the hotter things get. Weather, food, and people. <laughs> like my family. Yep, the Calabresi. You know what? There's, I love visiting my family because they're so wonderful and generous and great. And these stereotypes about Calabria, that they're backwards and, and stubborn and touchy. I mean, hello. It's all true. <laughs> it's all true. If you know any Calabresi people, it's all true. And they too continue on this tradition of melodrama. So you always have to find out in the family who's not talking to who, because you don't want to cause awkward moments. And this time around, Zia Pina wasn't talking to Zia Maria. Now, Zia Maria is married to the farmer who is Zio Luigi, and he has a farm, and that's, he makes moonshine for wine, ricotta that gives you diarrhea for about a week, and has a pig which he slaughters and then gives out rations to all the family. So I'm like, Zia Pina, why, you know, what's wrong? What's you know, going on with Zia Maria? She is dead to me. Oh, wow. Why is that? Did she like make out with your husband? steal money, say nasty things about you. She gave me the bad parts of the pig, and she's a bitch. <laughs> wow, that's what's going on in Cosenza. Okay, then I have another aunt who's a hairdresser. She works about two hours a day. She like closes the shop if she has to get a manicure somewhere. So I'm like, how you doing? How's business? What's the settimana this week? is a settimana di fuoco. It's a fiery week with your two clients. Like, in English translated, when you would say you had a fiery week, we'd hope that sex was involved. I don't know. Then another strange thing about the Calabrians is that they're super superstitious, and they do things to ward off, like, malalcio, like bad spirits, or if you say anything that could be negative, like, oh yeah, did you hear that um, such and so has cancer? Well, suddenly the men start rubbing their junk, I kid you not, and the women start rubbing their breasts. Do you know about this? Yeah, I mean, that's crazy, that's, I mean, I would think that was like a key to hook up, but apparently that's to ward off any negative energy. Who knew? So, yeah, pig products, let's see, rubbing of breasts and penises, a fiery week, that is not Fifty Shades of Grey, but my family in Calabria. <laughs> Go figure, yeah? But the melodrama always follows me in one way or another. Even from like the men that I've dated, especially some of the Italian men. My ex-boyfriend at one point told me when um, we had lunch late, and he told me that he never felt hunger. I'm gonna repeat that, he never felt hunger until he moved out of his mom's house at 30 years of age. <laughs> yeah, take a while to process that. He definitely should not be on any kind of advertisement for like feed the children in Africa. That's yeah, not good. He's also the same boyfriend that thought to be romantic and sweet. He would wait out for me um, outside of my doorway, and I would come out. And I'd surprise see him there. I'm like, what are you doing here? He's like, oh, I've been waiting for you to come out. I thought this, you know, would be a romantic way to surprise you. No, in my country, that's called stalking. <laughs> No. Yeah, when I came home and he was like crying, I'm like, oh my god, what's wrong? I mean, did you get bad news? Did someone die? Did you get the bad pork products from my, from my aunt? No, Lazio lost the match. 
shut up, lots of Roma fan. Yeah, so, you know, to, and now I'm single. I'm still waiting for my husband. I don't know where he is. He's very late, so clearly he must be Italian. I don't know. But, yeah, I need to step it up enough. In the meantime, to help find the right husband, I've joined an application called Tinder. So I want to show you some of the men that are Italian and also melodramatic. We need the screen down. Anyone that's seen my bit before, I have done this before, but unfortunately Tinder never stops for comedy gold. So here we go. I gotta stand in front so I gotta see this. Oh, I'm sorry, this was Grinder. I'm sorry, this was the gay man's application. Let's move on, sorry. I don't know what he was doing there. Oh, we've got Lou. Lou has a gun. Would you go out with Lou? I mean, he's kind of scary. Um, yeah, okay, so he's probably not a good option. Let me see who's next. Oh, Edward. Wow, that's intense. Wow, give it up already. Aren't you supposed to make people wait for that? Wow, Edward. Well, he's got a nice tattoo on his arm. Very nice. So, Edward, I don't know, swipe right or swipe left? Left. Left, okay. Let's move on to the next one. And, oh, the dirty sniper. Wow, that's drama written all over his face. Yeah, so dirty sniper. I don't know, these options are not looking good for me. I don't know if Tinder's the right application for me to find my husband, because so far, I don't know. Next. Oh. <laughs> in the audience this evening. I'm really sorry, because I mean, we wouldn't know who you were, but you would know who you were, and I'm really sorry. And this is probably illegal for copyright reasons, but I don't care. Move on. Oh, hello, Steve. Hello, Steve is clearly not Italian, so excuse me, this is not all Italian. Steve, clearly, I don't know where he's from, but he probably needs to just stay there. 1990, he's clearly from 1992. Very aged, very rough. So far, not good. Not good. The options are not good. Next. Oh, we have Melanie's message on top of WhatsApp. Um, wow. Now, I don't know why you are with this animal and why you would think this profile pic would lure me into your bedroom. <laughs> Just no, Ralco. No, dear. Mm -mm. Let's move on. No. Oh, look at that. I just, everyone stare into his eyes. So sweet, Stefano. He would take care of me. Yes, he would. He would. So sweet. So sweet. I think we're down to the last. Which <laughs> And the last one is, uh, you know, a lot of drama going on even on Tinder, and I think we all need to take my aunt's um, great advice, collaborate aunt. She says, eh, vabbè, you know, fumati una sigaretta, che tanto questa vita una schifezza. Smoke a cigarette, because anyways, this life sucks. So, acqua fanta con la gola, acqua Thank you very much.